other thing that's having a big implication on a property and investment at the moment is what is the post Brexit property market going to look like? Um, and I know this is probably very hard to predict and nobody kind of knows what's going to happen. Um, but again, just moving on almost from our earlier questions of um, investment today, what about investment in the future in property and how is, how is that going to look when we've gone through our Brexit negotiations? Yeah, I think there's a couple of things that certainly are being spoken about at the moment with regard to Brexit. As you quite rightly say, nobody knows exactly what is going to ha- is is going to happen. Um, one of the first things that that did happen and, and and is continuing to be the case is is the value of sterling. It, it did fall and it is still um, still low. So what we are actually seeing is is foreign investment um, coming in for property, um, particularly in cities like Manchester, London, um, you know, where a lot of building is, is, is going in. What we're seeing is is foreign investors buying off plan um, because they're getting more for their money now. You know, they're not having to spend as much um, of, of their currency because of the value yeah. of sterling has fallen. So that's a really um, something I've not actually thought about at all, but that's, that's going to potentially make our market look a little, little bit different over the coming years. Absolutely. So if you're an investor in the UK and you're going after the same property um, that somebody, you know, I don't know, from China or the Middle yeah. East, America, you know, wherever, it doesn't matter yeah. where else, if they don't have sterling, you know, yeah. wherever else, they are potentially going to be um, in a position where their money will stretch further than yours. Um, so there is that element to it, which obviously um, makes for competition and, and, and potentially um, can put up prices. But I think on the on the other um, scale is the amount of houses we, we don't have enough. There is, if you look around, there is building work going on. But then um, construction companies are under pressure, particularly if they have to import materials, um, because obviously if they're importing um, from abroad, those materials are going to cost them a little bit more. Yeah. Margins are going to be squeezed. Are they going to put up the same amount of houses for the same amount of money they thought they might have been able to do two, three years ago? these projects are um, you know don't happen overnight they will have been um, scoped and budgeted for quite some time ago prices of materials etc could be very different now um, with the price of of sterling and also labor particularly um, in in the south of the country where where you know a lot of sites will you know will have relied on on labor coming from the eu there has been a slowdown of people wanting to work here because they don't know whether they can you know settle here or or whatever so i think the implication of of those break of that brexit vote has has created other things that sometimes maybe goes under the radar and doesn't get quite the same media attention yeah um the other situation that we have is obviously a very low rate of, of Bank of England base rate, interest rate, which is great. It, it, borrowing is cheap and that's fantastic. However, we've got inflation that is increasing. Yeah. And normally what we would see when inflation increases would be an increase to the to the base rate. The Bank of England is reluctant to do that at the moment because wages have not increased at the same level and our economy is quite frail in, from that point of view at the moment that I think they're a little bit reluctant to um, to follow a trend they would normally have done which is is to increase uh, interest rates when inflation goes up but they do have votes on it regularly so it might be something that we would see you know in the future um, maybe after the negotiations have finished and I think that's something the property investors need to be aware of um, that if interest rates do go up and if any of their um, properties are linked to borrowings mortgages or loans how will that increase in in uh, base rate affect them are they on fixed rate products or are they on variable rate ones what is going to happen i think that um, property investors as well as people with residential mortgages have enjoyed a very laid back attitude to yeah. many years of low interest um, it's not going to last forever so I think that needs to be taken into account. Yeah, I think I think you're uh, totally spot on. I'm not my not my area of expertise, <laughs> but I do think you're totally spot on. Then, like you're saying, nothing lasts forever. <laughs>
Thank you for watching this video. If you like this content and you'd like to join our free online property training course, we've got a link for it on this page. And in there we cover a range of different property strategies to help you get started, either building a long-term property portfolio or creating cash-flowing property business. We also look at ways to increase your return on investment with any of the property you're maybe considering. And we also have a couple of cheat sheets and downloadable documents in there as well. Simply click on the link to join the free training course today.